use a minute or two to go, and I'll give you those as well. So if you see that and you're going, just, you know, ramp up naturally. Okay. Thanks, brother. Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, aloha, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. Andrew, the security guy here. We're going to be talking about entrance control systems. We've got Mike Johnson in here from Orion Entrance Controls. Thanks for coming down. I know it's your vacation, or, or where are you working? I'm not I'm sure. Working. Okay, I'm working. Okay, well, he's here so. working, so we got him a little <laughs> extra work out of him. And we're also going to have his boss on remote, Steve Caroselli, uh, the CEO and founder of Orion Entrance Controls. What I like to do when I start off is kind of get a feel for what's keeping you up at night these days. You know, we're all security guys. There's a lot going on. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, I just did a, a, a situational awareness training ah. a couple of weeks ago with InfraGuard, and that, right, that kind of was my overriding, like, wow, I, I, I feel like maybe we're all asleep at the wheel. Mm. So it's, uh, it's just, yeah, I think that's one of the things that really making sure that we're all aware of that the, what we live in today is an environment that we really need to be paying attention to what we're doing and how we're doing it. Mm, that's definitely something not that... not top of mind for average person on the street, is no, it? No, it's not. Hey, Steve, uh, can we pop Steve up there? Steve, I know you're uh, busy manufacturing things, and, and I know that keeps you up at night probably, but uh, from a security perspective, uh, what's, kind of, what's, what's top of mind for you? What keeps you up at night? You know, honestly, uh, the whole team talks about the situational awareness thing around mm. um, just so many things happen that people aren't paying attention to, uh, but also just, you know, being an American manufacturer today, uh, looking at the, the influx of other technologies coming from outside of the country, mm. um, looking at our, our labor pool, um, you know, there's a lot of conversation about training and, and labor and uh, just make sure that the, you know, the young young people today, the older people today, the, the veterans are employed um, and in the right place uh, doing good things. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah I, uh, yeah, I can definitely echo, you know, our industry, I gave just gave a talk recently on the uh, our the electronic security industry as a supply chain vulnerability. You know, we've got definitely mm -hmm. problems we've identified in our people, in our processes, and mm -hmm. in some of our products. Now, um, you guys have a great story. You're American made. I want to get to that. But I'd like to talk about, you know, when people say entrance control, you know, most of the world just walks through the door. Yeah. There's a lot of, lot of design. There's a lot of thought that's gone on to most facilities, hopefully, uh, sometimes, mm. um, you know, in, in that getting those people in that door. So take us, take us back to the beginnings of entrance control and your, you know, your experience in the market and what sort of brought you here to, to where you're at today. Well, you know, entrance control is definitely, you have to think about the entire envelope. You have to think about the experience of the user. You have to think about what level of security you're going to need. And so it's important at the very beginning to have those conversations, would, to really sit down and plan it out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't do that. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. That's, that's the thing that we really want them to do. Mm. We really want to have that conversation with them and say, what are you trying to prevent? What are your threats? What are the things that you're concerned about? Mm -hmm. You know, That's where we really like to be. Yeah, and I know it, I work in a variety of regulated industries as well as DOD, and the, the needs are different and the concerns are different yeah. depending on the type of facility. So who's the most active in your in your you know uh, I guess experience you know in in you know designing good entrance control versus where do you see a, a a gap in the market where it just doesn't exist and there's been no thought at all? Actually, Steve, what do you think on that one? You know, I think a lot of people look at the front door, uh, and, and there's a lot of focus, especially architecturally, on the front lobby. Uh, a lot of the, you know, your traditional, your smoking doors, your fire exit doors get mm. missed, your loading dock area gets missed, mm. uh, especially when you're considering your transient population, that being your delivery folks, your, uh, you know, the, the floor crawlers that are going to maybe look for to do some things that you shouldn't want them to do. But even the people that are supposed to be in the building um, get missed a lot. You know, I, I've been in this industry 26 years, wow. you know, between Los Angeles, California, uh, New York City, you know, coast to coast in different environments. And to this day, it's it's not a joke, but it's, it's a pretty common thing to say, somebody that understands and has a little bit of a knowledge 
can pretty much walk into a building today if you know where, where those vulnerabilities are. You know, carry a clipboard, carry a hard hat, look like you're supposed to be somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, which brings us back to the situational awareness. So we're, you know, we're always looking at that technology piece to say, how can we um, bring to bring awareness to those situations that aren't typically there? You know, like those those other doors. Mm -hmm. and obviously, on an interest control platform with optical turn cells on the products we produce, we're very heavily influenced of the front lobby because mm -hmm. uh, that's where, again where the sure. money is, where the focus is. Yeah. So. Did I answer the do, question? Um, you yeah, answer well, I think so. Is the um, uh, so do do you find architects uh, is that architects engineering uh, consulting sort of role uh, important? Are, are they initiating this conversation? Because I I can understand in new design, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, the questions hopefully get brought up. Now that doesn't mean they get budgeted properly, but hopefully the questions get asked. True. Um, in a, in a retrofit type of a market, sort of what are the challenges that you walk into there? You know where you well, know. Yeah, that is a that's a very long. <laughs> Very long list, but uh, a lot of the, you know, first of all, we hope that the architects and the consultants that are involved with that retrofit are asking these questions. Mm -hmm. if they're not asking the questions, and we try and aid them with that. But an old building, old infrastructure, you know, things that, you know, you can't core the floor because it's historic, or you can't core the floor mm -hmm. because it's post-tension, yeah. right? Uh, seismic reasons, so on and so forth. It's important to make sure that you're having those conversations as well so that you can and we do compensate for that mm. and allow for that. Mm. So, so Steve, has that been? You know, uh, obviously, you know, you're you're manufacturing this equipment. Was it? Did you start off saying, "Hey, we're going to go after the new build market," or what? Is there a real honest retro market out there that's available? It's just a probably longer lead time, or is it some of both? Uh, it's actually some of both. I and mean, when we when we sat down, we very they were very intentional in the way we designed the product. Um, to be flexible. We, so as an example, we make the smallest footprint. So if we're retrofitting a larger product, we can make the cabinet bigger and longer to cover those flooring construction issues. Ah. Uh, conversely, our electronics package can be mounted into other people's cabinetry. So if the cabinet still looks good, we can retrofit and upgrade the electronics in some cases. Um, and you know, basically have a new optical product with, uh, with the existing cabinetry. Because when the industry started, um, there was no standard, so it was a lot of customization, uh, a lot of unique design. So if you kind of look back, you know, 15, 20 years, if there are still some out there that are that old, we do a lot of modifications on those. The kind of right around the 9-11 time frame, you know, thinking that today is September 11th, so that's a lot on my heart today. Um, but a lot, there was a lot of optical turn cells put in in that time frame. Uh, you know, some in, in the right way and some not the right way, but mm. either way, they're out, they're outdated. Um, if not the technology, the lobbies are being updated. So we're doing a lot of remove and replace today. Um, so our product line was designed intentionally with that in mind, uh, but also to make sure that um, we're intentional about future proofing. So when we design a cabinet, we're making sure we've got flexibility to change out skins, tops, but also add technology. Um, I'm sure you're seeing, Andrew, there's a lot of uh, push and it's finally becoming mature and the, the biometric space mm -hmm. where you're seeing retinal, retinal, facial, uh, even fingerprint, uh, frictionless fingerprint becoming more mainstream. Mm -hmm. It's at the infancy still, but I think the algorithms are there where you're seeing more of that coming into play, especially in an access and motion environment like a lobby. Uh, or, you know, where there's a lot of people moving it very quickly. Are you seeing that out there as well? Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, I think the on the on the DoD side, the, there's a lot of discussion that Spay War about how are we going to implement multi-factor uh, biometric authentication. You know, they those guys either secure the entire perimeter and let you move around the facility, or mm -hmm. they secure only the higher level areas. So, mm -hmm. you know, ease of movement is still important, although you know it is the DoD, and so mm -hmm. they've got. Um, you know, when we're skiffing out rooms, uh, we're seeing more and more this this question about future technology. How are we going to implement it? Where's the biometric going to live, for example? Yep. Um, I think uh, also our, uh, out here, it seems like the banks. The banks are pretty good about turnstiles, although to me, the turnstiles are the older mechanical style mm -hmm. that um, I would mm -hmm. presume you folks are replacing. Is the, is the financial sector a big, I mean, I realize that's probably a nice lobby thing, but is that a big market for... Um, Entrance control? Oh, absolutely. There's okay. a lot of remove and replace happening right now. Okay. As well as trying to keep up with the, the regulations as they get, you know, stricter. Mm -hmm. 
they're honing in on how they want to secure those spaces, how they want to actually kind of compartmentalize, if they're just going to secure the, the envelope as a whole, like you said, and move around freely, or are they really going to try and dial in and mm -hmm. get to certain spots? <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, that's absolutely happening a lot. And let's, let's talk a little bit about any pass back, because where I see a, a turnstile in, a turnstile out, you know, probably those facilities are at least keeping track of where those people are. They know who's on site. Mm -hmm. Is that a, a popular thing, or do you really find people just letting people in? Is any pass back almost a natural when I've got a turnstile? You want to take really this one? <laughs> you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Thank this you, is, Mike. yeah. The, uh, it's a great question. <clears throat> um, we're seeing any pass back. Traditionally, people want to badge in and freely walk out. So we see a lot of timed anti-pass aspect, like in a parking application, uh, where, you, where that access badge or that credential may not be used again for as much as five minutes. Um, in a true anti-pass aspect, of course, you're carting in and out. Um, and again, that's what drove us to start looking at those secondary doors. Uh, if, I, if I may, we just released a product uh, that we'll call Door Guard for those single door applications. Primarily from a, from a life safety standpoint, if you're looking at a, you know, your traditional fire fire dump or an active shooter or a bomb threat, the non-traditional reasons to dump a building or a space, um, with that technology checking all those perimeter doors, we can now give a true count of how many people are inside of a space, whether that's a skip size space or, you know, a full museum, for example. Mm. Um, and and I, I've been looking for that technology for a long time, and we finally, you know, kind of honed in on the right technology that'll give you that very high level confidence of account so that in a uh, first responder you can as a security director or guard be able to go with your with your device and say hey look there's still 15 people in my building or 150 people and actually see a live countdown which i think is, pr is pretty uh, cool but also very useful real-time data that's awesome yeah. um let's let's talk a little bit you touched on just briefly let's talk and we've got a few minutes before the break so let's talk a little bit about fire how um how do you work with the, the existing fire law and is it is it working with entrance control and access control uh, or i mean i have come across it in like infant abduction things like that but i'm not mm -hmm. sure how how you work with fire guys and fire law fire can be a bit of a tricky animal but the the real the bottom line comes down to just you know talking to the ahj and or the authority mm -hmm. having jurisdiction sure. talk to them find out what it is that their rub is what's the problem what is the thing that they're really concerned about address that right off the bat mm -hmm. and you're good to go awesome so but yeah that is something that we we there's a, always a lot of conversation about fire yeah so. yeah and it's um you know steve to your point we we've all been you know we we know we have we have knowledge of who's in a place right mm -hmm. and we really want to be able to give that back at a moment's notice when somebody needs to respond to, to an active shooter type of event or whatever, you know, mass casualty, whatever it may be. And that's always been a problem, you know? Um, so it's good, I'm, I'm glad to hear that there's been some progress on, on that front. And you're, are you, um, yeah. do you, do you primarily go to market? Like we, we, uh, we had Chuck in, you know, GSX is coming up. Do you go out to shows and, and have to educate folks? Do you have to do these locally? Yeah. How, how are you approaching the market? Uh, just like that, we do a lot of shows. Uh, we're, we're just relaunching our website. We do blogs. We, we, we get out and do this as much as possible um, to, to educate uh, when we find the better bounce back trap to tell, explain to people why it's better, how it's better, uh, that it actually functions properly. Um, but, but yeah, we're, we do a lot of feed on the street work. Mm. Uh, we do a lot of trade shows and, uh, and obviously a lot of internet uh, website type stuff. Uh, where we, you know, we work with FOC with friends Chuck off quite frequently. Uh, Chuck Andrews and I talk probably, if not daily, then at least weekly. Um, <laughs> nice. You know, I, I like to use him to kind of keep me abreast of, of what those hot topics are, uh, but also connect, connect good people that do good things and get stuff done. Absolutely. Yeah, I know he's. Uh, that's what Friends of Chuck's all about. I mean, he's, he talked about some of the plans he has, so that's going to be a lot of fun for all of us. Great, great community. Mm -hmm. um, share us. We talked uh, briefly about about uh, some of the retrofit. What's the? Uh, how much out there is old and, and in, in need of replacement? Is it eighty percent, ninety percent, fifty percent? What's your What's your gut tell you? Yeah. Yeah, uh, but you know, Mike, I see you kind of oh, yeah. wiggling back there. Yeah. Do you want, go it, ahead. It, there are so many lanes. There are so many lanes. And being, I think, probably the only company that has really mastered, if I, I don't, if it, Steve, I don't even know, does anyone else even do what we do when it comes to this? Uh, as far as the, the retrofit capabilities go, that is, that's a huge part of the market. That's yeah. a huge part of the market. And that's something that we are actively 
actively seeking to talk to people about. It's the way we've gotten into you know, a lot of conversations and to the table because we have that capability to do that. And then with the new door guard technology as well, to be able to tie those two systems together, it's kind of an unbeatable package. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. you know, it's really and I, I'll, I'll, if, if Let I me tell you, we'll take, we're going to jump to a break, Steve, real quick. We'll be back in about oh, a yeah, minute sure. with Steve and Mike from Orion Entrance Controls. Going to pay some bills. Hang on. Hey, Stan, the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan, the Energy Man, at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. の日本語でお届けする。こんにちは、ハワイ。の日本語放送のコスト国末ゆかりです。各週月曜日の2時からお届けしています。日本語コミュニティ、ハワイの日本語コミュニティに便利なお助け情報、ニュースなどをゲスト
uh, reducing guard staff but keeping a high level of security. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it an easy you know conversation from a return on investment. Take away a guard, you pay for the turnstiles in a year or two. Yep. Um, today, it's become more of a necessity for leasing space. Yep. You know, we're 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 involved with a 200 lane remover and replace right now throughout uh, New York and Europe and South America mm. and across the U.S. That is literally about upgrading the lobby's user experience. Okay. Feeling still, still, you know, paying homage to the history of the location, but bringing the, the experience into a consistent model um, for the, in this case, a building owner that owns a lot of buildings. Thankfully, that's awesome. Is um, let's talk. Yeah. You touched on one thing that people I don't I don't think understand the problem throughput. Mm. Right. We've got to get mm. uh, two thousand people in a building. If I've only got one door probably going to take a while and some of them are going to be late to work because they all show up at 10 to yep. 8 and uh, none of them get to clock in until 8.30 because oh, yeah. they had a line 2,000 people long. Yep. So uh, do you, uh, ha I'm sure you have throughput considerations in your design. What's the user experience yep. for throughput? What are they sort of, uh, what are they, uh, what's acceptable today? You know, in, I know in access control, like they, they want to put that card and walk in. You know, yep. they hate it if it takes three seconds to open the door. So yes. tell me what, what that is on, on the uh, entrance control side of the house. It, it's exactly the same with turnstiles. If, okay. if they have to wait, they're mad. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. <laughs> they beat, Something's well, they wrong. push That's, on it. They start and break pushing it. on it, beating on them. They're uh, screaming at everybody. So it's got to be quick. And working in concert with the technology that's going to be used, that's something that's very important for us. So if someone wants to use a biometric or if they want to use a new type of reader, like the, uh, the what's that new, Steve, what's that new format? The CIOS, right? The CIOS. CIOS. The new CIOS card, yeah, sure. Historically very slow. Yeah, sure. So, you know, it's basically a full contact type reader. Yeah. Well, we worked with Essex to create a new reader that would give you read range, that would give you speed, that would up the throughput because a customer wanted to use that technology. Mm -hmm. But we brought it in-house, looked at it and said, this needs to be better. It's too slow. Because it's too slow. Yeah, it's a lot of technology in there, especially with they're fully encrypted, right? Yeah. Depending on the key. Absolutely. Yeah. And, that, and that's critical. I mean, we're not just going to give somebody something and say, boom, there you go. You know, mm -hmm. there's your mousetrap. Yeah, they won't be happy. No. No, no, no. And if there's a problem at the turnstile, it doesn't matter where the problem is, the problem's at the turnstile. Yeah, because it doesn't, that's, that's what the barrier is, yep. right? Absolutely. Understood. So Understood. throughput is, sure. throughput is critical. Mm -hmm. Through, just to answer that one question, throughput is critical. Mm -hmm. So we have to address it. And so um, on the back end, so that comms downstream, are you guys, uh, you're, are you using OSDP or are you relying on like the access control panels to, to provide that type of technology? Mm -hmm. the, I know, you know, C introduced the open supervised data protocol. Um, or device protocol, is that uh, from that card reader, are you embedding like other manufacturers access control components or are those components that you make or how's that, how's that work for you? Steve? Yeah, so, so essentially, Andrew, we are, we're a door on an access control system. So what makes right. an optical speed lane work is that we're validating with one credential, one body pass. Through. Right. Right. So we don't get involved in the data transfer from the card reader back to the panel, back to the turnstile. Um, that's completely outside of us gotcha. agnostic okay. to, that, to, that pro, to that protocol. We do sit on the network for, you know, for our guard-related software, the Infinity software. Okay. That allows you, the, the security officer or the, the person attending the lobby to see what type of alarms will let guests in, but that's all fairly local. Ah, I see. Okay, mm -hmm. nice. So, so you're working, mm -hmm. so pretty much your integration is fairly universal then. Mm -hmm. You can work with just about any access control manufacturer that's out there. What um, do you see? Because you mentioned CIOS, so mm -hmm. haven't heard of anyone deploying it yet, which is, I'm glad to hear you've got some forward-looking clients. You know, there's okay. a lot of encryption that's been left on the floor. Mm -hmm. You know, Matt Barnett and I were talking the other day, I think he thinks 95% of the market's still using 125K procs yeah. and, and unencrypted yes. Wagon, yeah. Wagon protocol. So um, I'm happy to see, do you see, is there more discussion about that? Are you running into clients that are interested in upgrading oh, yeah. their technology so you're getting a CLS type card? CLS yeah, and absolutely. biometrics. Uh, sorry, Steve, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, well, I mean, we're primarily seeing it where the consultants are involved. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're doing that education. It kind of went from, you know, the, 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 the Wigan to, to the RP40 and now to the CLS we're seeing in the last six to nine months. Uh, pretty much all of the products being specified on turnstiles have been the CIOS uh, product. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. I'm glad to hear so, yeah, that. We're, we're seeing, a, we're, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And is that a national level deployment that you're, that you're, this is going on across the country? Because I know you just, do you distribute outside the U.S. or only? Oh, global. Global, okay. Global, absolutely. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Is, uh, so, so we're seeing it primarily within the U.S. Okay. Uh, today. 
Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So let's talk a little bit about being American made. I, I love it, American yeah. made company. We don't have that many in the industry. We have, we, well, I shouldn't say that. We have, we have some in the industry, but um, none yeah. like us. How, how did it, how did it come about? Just give us the entrepreneurs, you know, give us the vision yeah, to, I mean, to delivery. So Orion was uh, was developed uh, essentially in my father-in-law's garage. You know, <laughs> awesome. I, just, I, I came back from a from a uh, from a from a, uh, another business entity that was no longer going to work for us, and I had a customer that told me we couldn't get out of the business and. Said, go here's a deposit check. Go figure it out. So wow, uh, we found a. My wife literally found a desk on the side of the road and we stuck it in the garage. And I bought a laptop and a phone and got to work. Um, <laughs> that's 100 awesome. percent so true. That's awesome. Yeah, what a story. Yeah, We've got the photos to prove it. You know, yeah, I do. I do. It's, it'll be on the new website. Uh, Mike can show you later. But um, so you know, the decision to be American made goes back even further than that. Mm. I used to own a small security company around the lakes here in New Hampshire. Okay. And we did, uh, you know, everything burger or fire, but we did a lot of, of the commercial as well. Uh, I mean, there's a very large scale printer company. They make printers that would print billboards uh, called oh, wow. Vutex. They've since been bought and bought and sold a few times, but I did the security in their building. And I remember standing up in their training room overlooking a production floor that was probably, you know, 20,000 square feet. And I said, someday I'm going to come back to New Hampshire and design a big expensive product that can be shipped anywhere in the world. And I had no <laughs> idea what that was going to look like. But uh, I, we just moved into a new office last week. It's 40,000 square feet. Wow. My office happens to be upstairs, so I was looking over the production floor going, hey, <laughs> that, uh, that idea I planted, uh, you know, came from, uh, you know, from an entrepreneurial family. My dad uh, had his own business since he was 17, so I grew up working, you know, started hanging wallpaper and painting when I was eight, and um, just got started. Uh, so the, the company's nine years old today, very intentional about being American-made. Uh, one of the companies I was a, a senior manager in previously, I had to sign checks and send money overseas, and that was frustrating. I wasn't allowed to buy shirts for my team at the time. Mm. Mike and I worked together, mm -hmm. and I'm proud. I don't know if you can see the Orion logo on my shirt right now. Nice. Wearing the pin. Um, <laughs> yeah, they wearing the pin. So, um, you know, uh, not only intentional about uh, bringing the business back home here to New England, uh, but also our, our vendor base is all within an hour of us, our fabrication partners. Um, it's right down to the PCBs. The PCBs are literally spun up 20 minutes from our facility in New Hampshire. Wow. Uh, so, we, you know, we, we would really work hard to make sure that to the component level um, that we're bringing things, you know, keeping jobs in America. You know, there's certainly things Americans aren't the best at making, and, and we do source those, but it's very, very small percentage, maybe 5% of our product. That's um, awesome. So supporting Steve. the local economy, Thank the products. You. Um, yeah, absolutely. No, it's, it's a decision and a choice. So um, it's interesting when we bring that up. It's important to a lot of people. It's not as important to some, um, but uh, we're very proud of that. Awesome. Orion Entrance Controls. If you're in the entrance control market, if you want to understand what entrance control is about, check out Orion. They've got a lot of education and a lot of support for the solution that you may need. Um, it's another episode. We're going to conclude on Security Matters. Uh, join us again next time. Uh, aloha.